Good evening and welcome to the Whiskey Lovers Society with me Gert Tief. Tonight a little bit of a difference. A couple of people have asked me what are you drinking? What is your favorite whiskey for the moment? What do you have on the bar? Well, it's not always a, a good or easy question when it comes to a whiskey reviewer. My preferences change sometime on a weekly basis. Um, every time I find something new, something different, um, that will be the flavor of the week, flavor of the month. And um, sometimes I think to myself, as I said, never going to get any better. The next bottle that I get, it's a little bit better. And uh, I do like it a little bit more than the previous one. So this change quite dramatically over the course of the year and um, of course reviewing bottles expensive hobby i'm also in a very fortunate situation that here in belgium you have a online store that will well sell you some samples try it before you buy it type of thing cost around four euro fifty for the cheapest sample and going up to 90 hundred euros for a 50 centiliter sample or 50 milliliters so it can be cheap it can also be bloody expensive but anyway um it is springtime sun shining in belgium so the warmth is coming back and of course also time to clean um, the bottles wipe them down get all rid of all the dust taking the ones at the back um and um, just give him a good old spring cleaning so people ask, so what do you have in your bar? Now, this is not all the bottles. I have some in the basement, in storage, things that I kept for a later date. So not going to be a, such a short video, but for the people that are interested to see what I have, um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Just going to give you a little bit of a rundown that I have, well, what I had behind me. I already started the cleaning so the dusting will come next and of course one that i think a lot of people have seen before um one that i still need to open the glendronig 18 year old allardyce this is a 2019 bottle um natural color non-chill filter quite looking forward to opening up this one in the future for that special occasion can you imagine oh look at that color a little bit of a sherry monster so quite looking forward to trying this one maybe on like um, a good old 10,000 subscribers maybe that's something that i will work out um, i'm not going to go in any particular order just going to grab what i have here i have a huge floor full of them um, Macallan, um, I've been quite a Macallan fan. I know a lot of people are um, pissing on Macallan. They are just about the name and not about the whiskey anymore. But I do like um, the idea of Macallan. I do like some of the whiskies of them. A little bit overpriced sometimes. Um, this one I pick up at the duty free stores. So when I see a special at the duty free stores and I look online and I see it's much cheaper way than in the local store in Belgium, I will definitely give it a try. So Macallan, um, the one I have not opened this one either, the Lumina. Um, bottle at 41.3% ABV, uh, a little bit on the soft side. Um, woody, spicy, vanilla, oak. So that's something that's going to have to open for the future. Um, I also have some other ones from then, the Macallan 15 year old. Now this was an excellent buy, uh, the double oak. Um, and I bought this in Zanzibar of all places. There was a little shop um, in, in Stone Town. I went for a walkabout and I saw these bottles that they have totally covered with dust, which has been standing there for quite a long time. So I went in, I said, um, what's the price? I said, can you better the price? He gave me an excellent price. Um, I think about 40 euros cheaper than in Belgium. So of course I had to buy it. Also I have the 12 year old. Also still need to be opened, but I have tasted quite a couple of them. I do like the sherry oak a little bit more. So 12 year old double oak. So that's also something that is um, part of my 
a small part of my Macallan selection. Um, I keep on trying to build a nice selection, but I keep on drinking them. So yeah, not going so well with this uh, uh, with my selection on that. Um, Loch Lomond. Coffee still, single grain, scotch, whiskey, peated, floral, smoky, non-chill filter, natural color. Um, absolutely a fantastic one. That's something that I would definitely, if you are new to peat and you want to give it a try, that's something that I will tell you, give that one a go and you will not be disappointed. A little bit noisy, sorry. Um, the next one, um, Glen Allenkey. You can't go wrong with a Glen Allenkey. Ten year old. This is the um, batch number three, uh, car strength, um, absolutely fantastic, 58.2% ABV. If you're into that sherry monsters, give this one a try. Every year they have a different batch, I think, I'm not sure what batch they are on now, but there's like maybe nine or ten. Give it a try, um, it's not that overly expensive, but it's quite a, a, a nice uh, sipping whiskey, high ABV, which I kind of like. Next one, um, this is a little bit of a strange one. I won this one in a competition. Well, not really a competition, just a lucky draw. This is the Aerolite Lindsay, a little bit of a smoky one. If you like a, a, a smoky whiskey from the Isla, 10 years old, single malt, and it is bottled at 46% um, ABV. Quite an interesting one, like this one as well. Um, Talk about random order. This is something that I picked up not so long ago. Um, I've had this one oh, maybe 20 years ago. A completely different bottle. Um, also from the Spayburn. It was also a 10 year old. Didn't like it that much. Of course, this is the new bottle. The Spayburn 10 years old. Oh my word, it is really nice. Absolutely fantastic. Perfect for my type of uh, notes. Uh, my nose and for my taste. Definitely give that a try. Um, the next one, I think I you cannot go on uh, uh, without mentioning this. Maybe it should have been the first one, the Glen Cadam 13 year old. This is really a fantastic whiskey. Light, floral, sweet, vanilla, all those lovely notes bottled at 46% ABV, natural color, non chill filtered. Um, Glen Cadam people, they do a fantastic job on their whiskey. I'm going a little bit faster because otherwise it's going to be a very long video. Teens and 12, um, this is essential for any bar. If you are new to whiskey, um, you will see a lot of people are ranting and raving about it. A lot of YouTubers in the few, uh, a lot of YouTubers in the past went um, on this um, crusade of Deans and 12, 46.3% ABV, natural color, non chill filter, Absolutely fantastic. Um, again, for somebody that's not a big peat fan, um, I keep on buying peated whiskey, which is a little bit strange. Of course, I've talked about this one quite often. Kulila, 12 years old, 43% ABV. Actually, one of the ones that I really like. Well, I'm not crazy about it, but if you can see by the level, it keeps on going down, so it can't be that bad. The next one, um, I have quite, I have a couple of them, and um, this is for me, is something that I quite bypassed over a couple of years, uh, this is duty free stuff, something you will always find this in any duty free shops that I've been, they live at 12 years old, on this side, sorry. So that is 40% um, ABV, so not high on the ABV, but it is just a light lovely sweet sipping whiskey of course you can with that you can also if i have, have a look here um if you want to go a little bit higher abv 40 48 percent abv um, you can go to license dram oh i really like this one sorry this side so the license dram um, this is something that i also really appreciate like it also a nice sipping whiskey for me don't add water um, it just ruins the experience for me a little bit on a glass and just sip it away for the next one i have a couple of uh, japanese whiskies takatsuru pure malt uh, i think this is one of the 
um, malt uh, whiskey awards or blended malt or pure malt uh, awards from the best whiskey in the world. Um, I, I'm going to have to review this again. Um, it must be something special if I say it's one of the best whiskies in the world. So this one is also very nice. Um, it is Japanese. It is 43% ABV and Japanese do make that nice light floral type of whiskies. So that's something that I also enjoy about Japanese whiskies. My favorite Japanese whiskey, of course, the Yamazaki. Um, all of them, <laughs> but unfortunately they are becoming really expensive. Uh, this one in Belgium still is 154 euro. No reason why it is 154 euro. So not in Belgium, in Netherlands, the online store where I buy some of my whiskey. You can still get this at the duty free. Um, and I think we're trying to get rid of it because the prices came down. I think I paid for this one 75 about a month ago in Belgium, in, the, uh, in Brussels airport, they were selling it for 85 euros. So if you see it at the airport, give this one a try. The Distillers Reserve Single Malt, Yamazaki. Quite an interesting one. And I'm running a little bit out of space now. Um, oh, the next one you, you cannot go without. Glen Scotia, Victoriana. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, also on the... Scotch Whiskey Awards, um, um, I think every uh, the last two years, well it's only been two years, I always get a mention of them. Um, I like the color of the bottle, um, the, like the high ABV, 54.8%, really fantastic stuff. So definitely if you can get this bottle, you see it and it's a good price, um, give it a go. Back to the Macallan, Macallan Gold, this is the GP one that I bought. This was also bought, well, I bought this quite a couple of years ago. Um, love this stuff. I think this is about the third bottle that I own. Um, 40%, so nothing special. But um, for me, it is just, it's Macallan. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, people buy stuff just because of the name. And uh, don't judge me because I know a lot of people do. But Macallan, for me, that is also quite an interesting one. Now... I am from South Africa, living in Belgium, um, so sometimes I go past the duty-free shop in Johannesburg and I try to pick up something South African. Now this one I actually bought in Uganda, a duty-free shop, um, and it was actually cheaper in the duty-free shop in Uganda than I can buy it online at a bottle uh, shop of Baines. Um, the 18 year old Baines, my word, this is a fantastic one. That really sweet monster, I love the presentation. 18 years old, bottled at 50.5% ABV, Pedro MS, single grain. Oh my word, if you are diabetic, <laughs> stay away from this one. It's a very sweet whiskey, but it is such a lovely whiskey. That easy, sweet sipping whiskey, no water, no nonsense. Just pour it and enjoy it. Um, one, that I, one that I bought quite a long time ago. Um, and this is, I think this is my second bottle. And this is, of course, is the Knock and Do, 15 year old. This is bottled at 43% ABV cheapest chips and I like the little wooden case that it came in um, a nice presentation box a nice gift for somebody um, it feels like they they put a lot of effort in a whiskey itself and the packaging itself to make sure that it is, at least it looks nice and attractive and it's quite a nice lamb as well sorry about the noise it's bloody magnets on it um, the next one Ooh, I had a couple of these whiskies from Paul John Whiskey Indian Single Malt. This is the Christmas edition 2021, 46% ABV, natural color, non gel filtered, the Paul John Indian Whiskey. Now, they make some nice sweet whiskies. Christmas cake in a glass. They also make it bloody difficult to open up these things, but at least it's secure. Look at the color on it. Ooh, my word, um, definitive. It's like eating a Christmas cake with loads and loads of fruit in it. 
and of course I have to wipe all these bottles off. Um, another one of my favorites, Glen Farkless, 25 years old. Talked about this one quite a lot. Tried a couple of them. Very cheap, 120 to maybe 140 euros for a 25 year old single malt Highland Scotch whiskey. You can't go wrong with that. Um, that is absolutely a ridiculously cheap price. 43% ABV. Um, going a little bit on the cheaper ones. Tamna Woolen. Quite a nice one. I actually saw this um, at my local supermarket. I think it was 29 euros for this one. It is 40% ABV. Single malt space side. Sherry cask edition. Um, lovely stuff. That is just an easy, cheap, budget friendly sherry whiskey. The next one, um, this is something that I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. Um, I've bought this one, well, quite a long time ago. And I just want to fix it so you can see this is the Glen Ruffers 12 year old. Um, as you can see, I haven't had much of it. I've probably had this bottle for about two, two years, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but I'm, I'm struggling a little bit this, with this one. It is still a nice one. Um, I'm giving it time, um, maybe just a little bit of oxidization going place. But um, you know, um, sometimes you need, need to give them a little bit of time just to warm up to the climate and maybe turn out to a little bit nicer one. But I'm still struggling with this one a little bit. Um, I'm on 17 minutes already and there's still quite a lot to go. Feel free to fast forward to the bottles. Um, the next one was a gift from a friend of mine. Uh, and something that I really appreciated. Um, it's bloody expensive. And of course, it's the Talisker 8 year old single malt. This is the special release 2021. And you know, when uh, Diageo slap a special edition on it, they want uh, 120, 130 euros. I'm not sure what they cost now. It is a nice smoky one. And even for an 8 year old, I was quite surprised how nice it is. You can see color wise, natural color. Um, 50 points, the eyes is not working so well, 59.7% ABV, but look at the color, very, very light, very uh, smoky, fantastic one, and you can see for somebody that doesn't like the smoke, hmm. quite an interesting one, even if I take it out of this uh, cardboard box, I can actually smell that smoke coming through. The next one, um, Jura, also a gift from a colleague of mine. Super, super excited about this one. Put it away, didn't touch it. Then uh, not so long ago, I tried to give it a go. Jura, the bay, 12 year old. Pedro MNS, 44% ABV. Oh my word, I have to show you the color of it. This is something. Look at the color of this Pedro MNS Sherry monster it is super sweet super nice super exciting super strong everything that i love in a nice whiskey give this one a try and uh, you can thank me later so um let's go on this one um oh, star I, I i quite struggled with this one as well then farkless um heritage this is a um, single malt scottish um and 40% ABV. So yeah, I, I did struggle with this one a little bit. I, that there was a little bit of oakiness that I didn't like. Um, I can't open it. So I I'm giving this one some time as well. I have to give him some time. But yeah, that is one of the Glen Farkless that I really struggled with, especially in the beginning. Um, not like the Glen Farkless 105. You open it up and wow. That is just fantastic. Um, Loch Lomond, just a quick another one. Uh, Loch Lomond, 12 years old. Um, yeah, if I see a nice, um, affordable, cheap Loch Lomond or special, I definitely pick it up as well. Uh, um, Rowan Co. Irish whiskey. Um, quite nice. This, this is really nice. I've 
I've done a couple of Irish whiskies, and for me, I think this is one of the best ones as well. 45% ABV, rub and go. Um, give it a try. I do like the shape of the bottle. Aaron, well, this is not the Aaron. This is the uh, one of my infinity bottles. I have three infinity bottles. Yeah, three infinity bottles. But if you want to try the Aaron uh, um, single malt, the Sortan cask finish, definitely something that you would love. Again, with the peat, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say anything. Artbeck, um, five year old wee beastie. Give it time in a bottle, it does change for, to the better for me. Um, a little bit of Americans going, uh, Wild Turkey 101. A little bit of a strange one. If, you, if you're not used to American whiskies or the bourbon whiskies, um, it does take, uh, you, you have to get used to that flavor, that different flavor components that they have, that sweeter, butterscotchy type of nose and taste. So give it a time. For me, Dwell Turkey 101 was really a nice one. Um, and it's something that's also great in a cocktail. Abelauer, um, Abuna. This is the batch 58, 61.1% ABV. Oh my word. High ABV. It, it's one of those whiskies you, you put it in your mouth. It just completely just evaporates, disappears. Um, you drink a little bit more and it's enjoyable and before you see it you try to get up to go to the toilet pew, and it smacks you in the head. Be careful with that one. Um, also I have the knock and do 21 year old. Um, I have this one quite quite a long time. I just did a short review of it. You can see didn't drink much of it. Um, this one was 43% ABV, distilled in 1994. Quite an interesting one. Well, I think all the whiskies that I have on my bar is interesting and nice. Um, and I try to, well, I try not to buy things that I know that I'm not going to like. If I can, I will always get a little bit of a, a sample somewhere. Just at least not wasting the money, especially some of them can be very expensive. Penriach Curiositas, hmm. also one of those nice beginner peated whiskies. Um, if you are not sure if you are going to like a heavy peat, for me this was a really nice, lovely sweetness to it, a light on the peat, um, quite fantastic actually. So this was one of my peated whiskies, um, for go to whiskies for quite a long time. And of course, um, yeah, that was um, something that I do like to try. and. Also share it with people that are not big into the peated whiskies. Um, Red Press Lestau, another Irish whisky that I have. Struggled with this one a little bit. Very nice actually, but this one also needed a little bit time um, to open up and become a little bit more user friendly. Um, as you can see, bottle half, so I'm not drinking quite a lot of it um, but it is a nice I do like the little stumpy bottle um, of it bottled at um, what is this one let me see oh they make it sometimes difficult to read and um, it looks like 46% ABV so nice one on, on that um, I also have you I've got so much many to lift I'm not sure if I'm going to go through everything. Um, I have the Royal Lochnager Game of Thrones. A really nice one. I have also another Game of Thrones, the Cardu Gold, um, Cardu Gold Reserve for 40% ABV. It was a little bit of a novelty idea. Um, one of them I bought, one of them my son bought for me as a gift. Um, oh. This one, uh, the Orchard House Compass Box, 46% ABV. Oh my word, I do like this one. This is bottle number two. So, yeah, I don't drink much. I just make videos about whiskey. Jack Daniels, yeah. Um, I have a couple of them, and most of them were duty-free buys. Uh, 
Tennessee Fire. Yeah, was not a big fan of that. Um, I also have the Sweet and Oak. Um, I do like the name Sweet and Oaky. So that's the reason that I bought. Um, I bypassed this one, uh, Bold and Spicy. Now in the end for me, I like the Bold and Spicy more than the Sweet and Oak. Go figure. Next one, yeah, I still have to go back to the South African Baines again. This is the No Age Statement Baines, Baines Single Grain um, Double Matured South African Whiskey bottled at a 43% ABV. In South Africa, we do not bottle at 40% ABV. Then a usual suspect, not going to talk about this one, the Shivers Regal 12 year old. I mean, you can get it everywhere. 35, 36 euros for a bottle, cheapest chips. I do like this one. Royal Salute, 21 year old. I bought this just because of the bottle. <laughs> um, you, you have to have a bottle like this in, in, in your bar if you are a serious drinker. Jack, Dan <coughs> Jack Daniels, um, this one fantastic. Single barrel, 100% um, proof. This one is really fantastic. My son bought me this one for a birthday gift. It is a Traveler's exclusive, but they were selling it at the online store. Um, just a couple more to go, but then I'm going to stop. I'm at 27 minutes already. So a um, little bit of a nice, sweet sherry monster, Edra Dower, 10 years old. Um, that's something that I'll definitely recommend for you as well. Um, little Irish green spot, fantastic. I have the I have the Abelauer 12 year old double cast um, matured sherry cast and an American oak. Oh, sorry about the noise. Bought that 40% ABV, but um, a, a really nice one. And my son always tries this one as a cocktail. Chippies, little. Glen Moray, Speyside, um, Elgin, classic, uh, classic, definitely a classic, cheap, 40% ABV, but a nice sherry to whiskey. I also have a nice um, independent bottler Adelphi selection. This is the Ben Ryan's 10 year old, 53.2% ABV. Haven't opened this one. I think this one will soon be sacrificed um, to make a video look at the color on this one this was also a gift from a, one of my colleagues um, that um, are also a big whiskey drinker and when he sees something special he always thinks about me and he will always pick me up something nice compass box um, spice tree yeah really nice um, 46% ABV, natural color, non chill filter, ticking all the boxes, compass box to make some fantastic ones. A couple of them that I still need to try in the future. Um, lovely color on it as well. I love the design. I like the, the liquid. I like everything about compass, compass box um, and what, the, what they have to offer. Another one. Um, from Santori whiskey, a little Japanese whiskey, Vashita. This one didn't last very long. Single grain, wasn't expensive, 43% ABV. I think, um, just want to show you quickly. Yeah, not much left, but a typical light whiskey, a light sweet whiskey from Japan. And um, let's see what do I have almost forgot that's something that is fantastic the jack 10 46% uh, a 46% abv isle of mall uh, natural color non chill faulted nice peated whiskey another gift from a friend of mine um, this is a festival edition bottle this is the um, what they call the uh, Festival bottle, whiskey on its strand with whiskey at the beach. Um, ben Riach Distillery, seven year old. This is bottle number two of 72 bottles only, 50.4% ABV. 
Um, another Japanese whiskey, Akashi. Oh, this was just a cheap bottle that I picked up at a uh, duty free store. So I thought I'm going to give it a go. I think I paid about 32, 34 euros. I think I really overpaid for it as well. 40% blended whiskey. But it's quite a nice one, especially if you have your friends over and you want to go through the world. Um, at least I have something to taste from Japan as well. Bowmore said quite enough about Bomo already. Um, only have a 12. For me, the 18 year uh, old Bowman is so much better. Almost done. This one, I was really hoping it's going to be a nice one. I tried it too. A couple of times I put it away, give it time. Come on, buddy, you can do it. You can get better off, oh, but it's a stinker. Molestone. I don't know what happened with this bottle. It is Pedro Eminem's uh, cask. Oh, but it smells like old rotten tires. I, I don't do not understand it. It is um, bottled at 46% ABV. I just cannot get over that stinky tire air that comes out of it and it doesn't seem to go away. The last one that I just want to mention, uh, if I can reach it, um, this one is a really, I think this is the cheapest whiskey that I have in my collection. Goldless, this is a Belgium um, single grain whiskey, not bad. Um, something when my son wants to make some cocktails and I don't feel like spending or putting expensive whiskey and, and then mixing it up with anything else, um, I will just hand him this bottle as well. So that me in short, I still have a lot of other Jameson that I'm not going to talk about. Um, and then of course I do have a lot of samples that people want to send to me. Or if you want to send me a sample and you are within the EU, um, feel free, you can send me a sample. If you are outside of the EU, of course, it, um, it's really not possible or feasible for me to accept any samples um, for the reason they charge me something stupid um, with import duties. If you say the, uh, the sample is worth 20, they will charge me 35, 40 euros um, to bring that uh, 100 milliliters into the country. So for me, that is absolutely just, just stupid and not worth it. Of course, if you're in the EU and you say, I have something that you haven't tried, I've went through everything, you didn't try this one, feel free, drop me a line, um, leave me a comment, let's talk to each other and let's see if I can get the sample. Otherwise, um, it's becoming a little bit expensive accepting samples outside of the EU. So that on short, I do have some more. But um, just, I just try to keep it short as possible. For the people that were interested in what whiskey I have, which ones I'm drinking now, um, of course I also have bags and bags full of samples that I bought in the online store. I think we are now at about 420, 430 um, reviews over the last two, just over two years. So you can imagine I bought a lot of whiskey. So thank you very much for watching and um, leave a comment. Which ones have you not uh, seen on my uh, review? I find these thousands of them still that out there that needs a good review. Um, yeah, I will always try to find something. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my samples and what I have on offer. And of course, the next thing, I have to take all these bottles, dust them off and put them back on the shelf. So see you next time and appreciate all your comments and all your subscribers. Cheers. Thank you.